May I please invite Rajneesh on stage to say a few words and introduce our uh, stalwart on stage once again, please. Let me start with first uh, thanking Shri Moi for the commendable job that she's doing. She's helping us. Uh, there's a very interesting topic on uh, today's context of smart cities or whether you call uh, integrated metropolis or whatever it is and who better can give us a direction give us that perspective than the most the than the stalwart who is present with us the passion with which he speaks on it uh, you know, speaks volumes of how it can be done. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor and a privilege for me to introduce one of the biggest visionaries of India today and a very dear friend, Sri Vedmani Tiwari ji, to have us to speak and enlighten us on how to decentralize power generation. May I please give a big round of applause? And invite, may I invite Mr. Ved Maniji, please. So, good evening everybody. Thank you Rajneesh. This is the last session. It's very difficult generally to engage people during the last session. The topic that I am here to talk about is enabling decentralized generation. When I think of this topic, two things come to my mind. The bigger, the better, the small is the beautiful. These are the dilemmas which society has been going through since time immemorial. From a hunter-gatherer society to agrarian society to industrial revolution to knowledge economy, globalization, society has always tried to do things at much large level. Economists call it economies of scale. The whole world thinks the bigger the better and the bigger the better because it gives you power to control an individual. Society likes control individuals. You will be wondering that why I am talking this in the context of energy. If you see the power industry, the electricity industry, as I uh, discussed in uh, one of my initial thoughts, that this is characterized by simultaneous consumption and production phenomena. The technology, the uh, operating systems, the commercial arrangements, legal regulatory framework, they all cater to this that electricity has to be con produced and consumed simultaneously. And uh, if we go back five decades, we will find that we had utilities which were city based. If uh, some of you uh, can google this, you will find that at the time of Indi independence, we had utilities, vertically integrated utilities which were catering to only a city. Uh, Desu, uh, Delhi will have its own powerhouse, its own uh, distribution network. Allahabad will have its own, uh, uh, Varanasi will have its own. But slowly and slowly, the electricity system started becoming bigger and bigger. We got state electricity boards, we integrated the states. We will have uh, generating stations for the state, transmission network of the state and this distribution uh, network for the state. Then again the same thought, economies of scale, the, big, the bigger the better. Uh, we started having large power plants because economies of scale directed that the power plants should be situated closer to source of fuel. 
we then we went to ultra mega power plants and uh, we started transporting mass power from large distances to all over the country people have also started talking about continental grids global grids because the technology that was available to us was economical only if we could do it at a large scale and it's not uh, about uh, electricity alone if you see any source form of energy uh, oil and gas you have large scale exploration facilities you will build huge refineries you will have shipping grids or pipeline grids transport energy to consumers the only difference between electrical industry and the oil industry has been that the oil industry has a storage facility electricity never had that then what happened in last 10 years solar started changing the world solar is a fantastic technology people who understand solar industry when people bid for 500 megawatt plant the costing unit is what it's such a modular technology that everybody costs for one watt and builds up hundreds of megawatt of plant to make solar affordable to the society the world went for again large grid scale solar power plants but imagine we are transporting hundreds or thousands of megawatts to a pump in village how much loss we are having we have a technology which is amenable to few kilowatts to several gigawatts and it does not say that i will not be viable if you construct me for a few watts the technology is so modular that you can install a solar panel on top of your house and you can generate your own electricity this is the phenomena which we should be very carefully think about and elon musk is already if you look at his ventures one of the ventures is solar city and the other venture is tesla and he is only on the rooftop solar elon musk does not do a grid scale solar the idea is that one day all of us will generate our own power and will be self sufficient to feed our own loads and that's the power of decentralized generation until now when battery energy storage was not available everybody thought that even if you have a rooftop generation facility what will you do when the sun is not there and you still need grid and you will have to be connected to the grid but battery energy storage and as the previous panel discussed the price has come down from 2000 dollar per kilowatt hour to 200 dollar kilowatt hour it's making solar energy viable 24 by 7 that is the paradigm that we have to think that our solar program says 100 gigawatt 60 of that 100 gigawatt is coming from grid scale solar park based implementation 40 gigawatt is a target for rooftop and as sunil was telling here that we have done only 1 gigawatt a country with a total installed capacity of 330 gigawatt has done only 1 gigawatt of rooftop solar why is this so 
I believe that uh, the grid scale solar implementation was great to drive down the cost of solar modules and the balance of system for solar. But the time has now come to enable a, an intermediate solution which communities can afford because solar has an issue that uh, there are certain states which have potential for solar certain states do not have. So, but the time has come when should start, when we should start thinking about a community scale solar plants and how powerful this thought is that if we can build smaller plants of few hundred kilowatts or few megawatts, we can solve energy access problem for most of the people. There are still 18,000 villages which are not connected to grid. Do we need to them, do we need necessarily to connect them to grid? With a few megawatts or few hundred kilowatts, they can generate their own power. But why are we not able to do this? Because we are living with an electricity industry which was designed to cater to a large scale grid connected program. We have generators who have built large capacities and have signed power purchase agreements with discoms. What to do with those power purchase agreements? We have transmission licenses who have built capacities to connect generation, uh, generation locations to consumption centers, long term investments. We have regulated discoms who have got right to own their customers for time immemorial. Given this entrenched incumbencies, it is impossible to disrupt this industry to make communities, communities have full control and ownership on the on the energy needs. With electric vehicles coming into reckoning now, there is a need for us to think this holistic paradigm where a village can take care of its own transportation need, its irrigation needs, its lighting, heating, cooling needs and it can be self-sufficient. And we need not generate the power thousands of kilometers away from that village and transport it by incurring huge losses, having massive grid network and all the time we are talking about the issues of how do we integrate this. So, technology is available now, the technology is available and it is high time that we start thinking that how do we make best use of this technology. Do we need grids in the, in the distributed uh, scenario? Yes, we need. Why do we need it? I will just give you an analogy of computing industry. All of us will remember min, micro computers, mini computers, mainframe, super computers. This was the, this is how the computing industry was evolving. Then Bill Gates came, desktop computing, then internet came, connected desktop computing, the laptop, mobile phones. Everybody has now brought the power of computing in his pocket and we are able to generate and consume data at our will and the whole world is connected with each other. Imagine with solar and storage systems we can build an energy internet 
exactly the same way that, as the internet operates for data and internet for data has optic fiber grids has server farms and distributed devices in forms of mobile phones laptop ipads desktops and you have the power to generate and consume the data that you want and you have the power to share it with each other now if we build grids where people can connect their small medium large renewable plants they will take care of their own needs whenever they have surplus they can barter or trade that uh, energy with each other can we think of that sort of a energy internet and that's the power of the decentralized generation if this industry has to break free and bring about innovation and give power to every individual on the energy that one needs we have to th enable this industry we have to think of how to change the laws which will enable distributed generation to be connected on the grid and create an energy internet as i said in the morning in, in the context of transportation the same thing applies here india can take lead because our per capita consumption of power is still 1/4 of the world india will be growing at 8 to 9% every year and imagine india has to catch catch up on per capita consumption if you combine these two phenomena and you also see that the way the energy prices are going down the affordability and access will not be an issue today when we talk of energy we talk of energy security energy access energy affordability all these things are gone when these things are gone it's high time that as a country we allocate resources which help us build this energy internet and what that would mean build ubiquitous stronger smarter grids let massive investments happen in storage facilities disrupt the utility the discom model let the infrastructure let this separation between transmission and distribution infrastructure go away have a unified license as we have in telecom forget this separate the infrastructure from the consumer just like in telecom the infrastructure is owned by infrastructure companies and the consumer companies only serve you do a customer service airtels and vodafones of the world they don't own infrastructure we can do this and as a country as i said in the morning we have to have that mindset of leap frogging india never saw pstn most of the indians never saw pstn phone the only phone that they ever had was mobile phone and india is the only country in the world which has a biometric identity system given to every single citizen of the country in form of aadhar card and now the prime minister is disrupting the whole world by going for electronic payment imagine all these domains india has leapfrogged india has not seen the intermediate economic models technologies it has leapfrogged into the world's best and that's what we can do with energy combine the power of the catch up that we have to do in terms of per capita consumption the technologies available in the world today if we connect the political will that india will show to the world 
that we are capable of building an energy internet. That's the power of distributed generation. You, you are not, if you go for a distributed generation, we will forget huge NPAs sitting on the bank's balance sheet because the whole concept was build large scale power plants. It will be, a, it will be sad for all of us that given the technology and economic context in the world and our own developmental needs, if we are not able to tap this opportunity to have a distributed power generation infrastructure which is akin to an internet and we all know that how did internet revolutionize the world, we have this unique opportunity. And I personally believe that a Prime Minister like Honorable Mr. Narendra Modi is the only one who can take up this kind of bold bets. So dear friends, this is all I wanted to say that I will not talk about whether the net metering is working or not, whether the discom is allowing me to connect to a, uh, my rooftop or not, or is there a wire available for me to, to connect to a power plant that I want to build, small plant, do I have open access or not, these are all incremental changes. If we can think of a very disruptive concept as energy internet, we would have succeeded. And what, what all does it require? It require us necessary changes in the law which will break the monopoly of the incumbent players whether they are discoms or the large central, utility, central transmission utilities. We have to create enabling environment where entrepreneurs can come and participate in this disruption. We enable our financial regulations, we allow the venture capital and the private equity to come and invest in these areas and we take the leadership in the world in terms of sustainable energy. If these three, four things are done and we have that mindset that we will do something extremely ambitious which will change the world we live in, that sort of opportunity is available for us. That's all I wanted to say. If you have questions, I can take few questions. Rajneesh, I can take few questions if people have. Yeah. The solar is appreciated, sir, the way we have done last three years. And uh, the rooftop, Mr. Tiwari is highly appreciated the way we are looking ahead. Where we stand with the sea, sea waves power and uh, what are the hurdles? Why we are not able to tap the sea wave power in India? So when, you, when we talk of sea based power, technologies available today are one geothermal and tidal wave uh, technologies for, uh, to tap the energy of ocean and seas. What I believe is that these technologies are still not at that stage where they are commercially viable. They are in R&D phase and as a country we will always be full of opportunities. We will have hundreds of opportunities in, in front of us. But we have to make choices. Do we want to invest our 
economic resources in developing a technology which may still be 15 20 years away or we want to invest in technologies which can give us return in next 2 3 years 4 years time so that's what i i believe that these are the choices that the country will make and i'm sure that uh, the con this country has shown that we have not shied away from our responsibility in investing into emerging technologies and that has been demonstrated in the space of atomic energy and the space same way what i believe is that the way the prices of uh, energy coming down country will have enough economic resources to invest into these emerging technologies also but probably they are not at the horizon at this point of time because we have not tapped the full potential of wind and uh, solar in fact uh, the offshore wind is a huge prospect and uh, which will uh, the uh, many countries are already taking lead and i'm sure that the given the uh, such a large coastline that we have a uh, very long coastline india will also go big time into offshore uh, wind and uh, that will be one application of that uh, we use we are using the wind resources of the sea so i think everybody is tired yeah solar or uh, whatever is the alternative power source is a very capital intensive uh, you know uh, thing who is going to invest suppose today if uh, like in bombay we are uh, the bmc you know there's a law that every building should have a solar panel or whatever it is the common lighting should be done uh are the building that i stayed the builder had provided two solar panels and it was connected to two bulbs precisely and uh, that did not light up anything barring somewhere something there is a tremendous impetus on uh, you know on on people on on the prime minister saying that we need this much of alternative solar power green power everything is fine but it is such a capital intensive uh, you know it's a project how do we as an individual you know flat owners or individual house owners how do we you know go to that place for, and generate that kind of electricity and decentralized power generation so the good news is that solar is no more capital intensive 5 years ago solar modules were 2 dollars a cent 2 to 2 dollars a watt today they are 25 cents a watt so you can build a 1 kilowatt plant on top of your house at a cost of around 50000 rupees today government also gives capital subsidy up to 30 30 percent capital subsidy and you also have option to take home loan with your rooftop solar so solar is already affordable what is the problem is that we have given monopolistic access to the consumer to our discoms and discom and because today you don't have the 24 by 7 power from solar so you have to still get connected to the discom as sunil was telling that the net metering and all those things have been regulatory commissions have already notified that but discoms don't want to encourage that because what they believe is that anybody who will put up a solar is a customer who is a well paying customer only those customers will put up a solar who are well paying customers why should i let that customer go so i'm saying that the technology has enabled solar prices to come down like anything a utopian thought will be that the solar energy will be free in 5 years time it will be so cheap that you will that you will assume this is free when i was in san edison we were bidding for uh, 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 solar park in andhra pradesh a 4 rupees 63 paisa was considered to be a revolutionary pricing and today if government does bid every day i think the prices will come down every day because with every bid the prices are coming down and mind you the one fact that you are rupee at 2 rupees 44 paisa with 16% efficiency conversion efficiency of solar modules today's pv technology 
has a conversion efficiency of 16 percent. In laboratory, the solar modules have been tested which have the conversion efficiency of 45 percent at JT. Imagine when this 45 percent efficiency module comes into the market, what will happen to the energy pricing? No, that is what Rahul told, no, told you now that in 10 years the storage price has come down from 2000 dollar to 200 dollar. And if you see the learning curve efficiency of uh, storage, it is 22 percent. That means with every doubling of the capacity, the marginal cost of storage comes down by 22 percent. That means it will be 100 dollars in 3, 4 years, it will be 50 dollars in another 5 years. And one thing that I will tell you, technology has always proved that people, pe proved people wrong. Whatever assumptions you, you take today, it will happen much faster than anybody can imagine. You just go and research that what were the, what were the projections given for, by, for solar, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000, just go through those projections. You will find that all those projections have been proved wrong. All the milestones have been achieved 10 years ahead of those projections. And one more thing about storage is, that is not energy alone. The mobility itself is moving towards storage. BMW has announced that in 5 years they will, they will not make any car other than electric vehicles. Yeah, but we don't get the mobility, you don't get that kind of subsidy. The Riva. You don't read, you don't see. No industry or technology can succeed as long as it is dependent upon subsidy. So, so that's what I told you in the morning. Government of India has to announce a large program. When Mr. Modi announced a 100 gigawatt solar program, it was to be driven through several government uh, initiatives like RPO obligations of DISCOM, DISCOMs will buy, even if the solar energy is expensive, please buy. Second was that I will bundle solar energy with the uh, uh, dirty thermal energy because that, that is coming at 1 rupee 90 paisa, 2 units of thermal energy and 1 unit of solar energy and because, so that it becomes affordable to DISCOMs. Hmm. And the third was that I will fix up a tariff and SECI will give you viability gap funding. <coughs> what has happened? It has come down like anything. Now, Seki's subsidy is not required. Where are we using that subsidy? We can use that subsidy, to, you, we can do the, use that subsidy for storage. If India announces a 20 gigawatt storage program, the whole world will come and set up manufacturing facilities in India, and India will drive down the prices of storage like anything. It will not only help us reap benefits in the space of energy. But it will also massively help us in mobility. See, automobile companies have a big entry barrier. And what is that entry barrier? They are engines. Yes. The BMWs and Mercedes and uh, Toyotas of the world, the only entry barrier that they have is their engines. You must have seen all e rickshaws on the road. Why there is no Bajaj in e rickshaw? Because this is an amazing technology, no entry barrier and it is like a laptop. You buy few, few electric motors, buy a wheel, just assemble them, put a battery and you can assemble an e-rickshaw. Same thing will happen in cars. The car companies are looking at, staring at their destruction because in future, there is the, the engine is not an entry barrier, anybody can assemble a car and the, who will own the car platforms? Googles and Apples will own the car platform because the car will be run by AI, software, these will become the enabling things, they, were all, they will all be connected. Now imagine every corner of India, people can have mobility on demand at affordable prices. You don't need, 
today we talk about that a petrol pump in the if you have to provide a, a hydrocarbon fuel you have to take the distribution uh, arrangement up to the village now with decentralized power generation every village can have its own power station and and will have its own fuel station because the electric vehicles will be there and they will be so cheap because they, they anybody can assemble those vehicles and that's where the energy storage has a big time implication for india it solves not only our energy needs it also solves our mobility needs thank you so much <laughs>